Hello, high level listeners. Welcome to episode 11 of our advanced English podcast from High Level Listening. Today, we're going to talk about doing chores around the house. So cleaning, tidying, organizing, and making our home comfortable and clean. But first, before we get into all of our chores, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, we're High Level Listening, a place where English language learners can take their English to the next level. I'm Kat, a teacher from the United States. And I'm Mark, a teacher from the UK. Uh, we're here to give you a side-by-side -side look at the English language from both the American and British perspectives. And if you'd like to do some extra studying, we do have PDF transcripts available for all of our podcast episodes for high-level listening members. All members receive copies of old and new episodes, so you can follow along and take your studying to the next level. Simply join our YouTube channel with the link below. Like all our previous episodes, we're going to share our own experiences about doing chores around the house. Kat will go first. And then I'll go second. After we've both read our scripts, we'll compare the language and vocabulary side by side, explain some specific phrases, and give you more examples, and then you'll be able to use them when you talk about doing chores in your house. So I will ask Kat the question, what kind of household chores do you usually do? Since I usually have more free time on the weekend, um, that's usually when I catch up on all the chores I missed out on over the week. By Friday, uh, <laughs> the house is kind of a mess with my stuff everywhere, so I usually start by picking up things off the floor. Once everything's picked up and I've cleared off the tables, I get the vacuum out and start vacuuming up all the dust and little bits. We've got tile in the house, so I like to give it a quick mop in the common areas like the kitchen, bathroom, and the living room. It doesn't have to be spotless, just enough to feel clean. All right, so that was my American side. Now we're going to introduce the British side. Mark, what kind of household chores do you usually do? I usually tackle all my chores at the weekend when I've got a bit of free time. At the end of the week, the house is a bit of a tip and my stuff is all over the place. So I usually get started with some tidying up. Once everything is off the floors and the tables, I start hoovering up all the dust, making sure I get into all the nooks and crannies behind the furniture and in the corners. Next up is probably the kitchen, so that involves doing the washing up. And I'll also give the surfaces a good wipe down, take the bins out and make sure the place is spotless so I can finally sit down and enjoy the clean space while I can. Right, excellent. So part of our goal here at High Level Listening is that you get the side by side. I just finished my American side and Mark has his British side. So English is really fun to learn, but it can be hard sometimes to distinguish one from the other. So let's kind of break it down and we're going to break down each expression and we'll let you know if it's a little bit different in English or if it's a little bit different in the American accent. So we'll go ahead and start. When do you usually do your chores, Mark? I usually tackle all my chores at the weekend when I've got a bit of free time. You might know tackle, like tackle something. You might know it from sports or football. If a player slides in and tackles the other player or tackles them in rugby. But we also use tackle if we're doing a difficult task that could take a long time or could be quite tricky. So all my chores will be washing up, hoovering, tidying. There's a lot to do. So I know it's going to be difficult and time consuming. So I tackle my chores. <laughs> I like get ready and I tackle them. You might say, I need to tackle the washing up. That means there's a lot of dishes in the sink. I need to tackle it because it's going to take a while. Or I need to tackle the bathroom. Maybe the bathroom's quite dirty. It's going to be difficult and maybe time consuming. So yeah, if you have a big job, a big chore in front of you, you can tackle it. Do people say that in the States? Yes, absolutely. Um, we even say that with work problems as well. It's like, mm, I, I don't want to tackle that right now. Let's do something simpler. 
So we even think about it as if you have to tackle something, it's going to take some time, it's going to take some problem solving, it's going to take some effort on your part. Maybe let's do something simpler before we tackle something bigger. Mm, right. So when do you usually do your chores? Since I usually have more free time, the weekend is when I catch up on all the chores I missed out on over the week. Um, so I was kind of laughing as I was writing this because this is just a natural way that we would say these things. Catch up on something, missed out on something. So we have two phrases here that you might be wondering why are there so many words? Catch up on something, miss out on something. So if you missed out on something, that means that you didn't get to do it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. I missed out on your party. I had to work late. So I didn't get to do that. I didn't get to go to this party. If I missed out on some chores, I mean, maybe it's because I couldn't do them, but it's also maybe because I didn't want to do them. So I missed out on some chores. So I had to catch up on some chores. So at least there's that on on something, catch up on something, missed out on something. Catch up is when you should have done the things earlier, meaning Monday, Tuesday, I wanted to clean, but I didn't. I should have, okay? Ooh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I was supposed to clean more, but now on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I need to do it all. So I have to catch up. I kind of have to go back, take those chores and catch up on them. So um, I catch up on all the chores I missed out on over the week. Okay, it's also another phrase you can use at work, right? If you have to catch up on something, mm -hmm. maybe they have, there are some emails from yesterday. I didn't do them yesterday, so I have to do them today. I need to go back and reply to them. I need to catch up on those emails. If you missed a, an episode of High Level Listening or on our mm. podcast, you can go back to our playlist and catch up on everything. So if you missed an episode while it was Christmas, or if you just uh, needed to take a little break, you can always catch up on our episodes as well. <laughs> nice, nice plug. So number two, what chore do you usually start with, Mark? By the end of the week, the house is a bit of a tip and my stuff is all over the place. So I usually get started with some tidying up. So the first British word we'll see here is a tip. Yeah, that's my very house, British. Yeah, a bit of a tip. My house is a tip. My house is a big mess. There's mess everywhere, clothes on the floor, um, old crisp packets, food, plates, cups. It's a tip. A tip is actually a place where you take your rubbish or your garbage and give it to the plant to be recycled. Even like TVs or old fridges, you take it oh, to it's the, the tip. It's the garbage dump, right? It's, yes, it yes. is. So it's a bit of an exaggeration. It's like <laughs> my <Hopefully>. mum. <laughs> yeah, my mum used to open the door of my bedroom and be like, oh, this, is a, this place is a tip. Mm -hmm. Clean it up. So I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, you will hear people use it if their house is just a little bit dirty or untidy. My room is a But tip. never say it to anyone else. <laughs> Your mom can say it to you. <laughs> That's but a good point. I'm, I'm not going to go to someone's house and be like, wow, what a dump. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah, you can call your own house a tip and your parents can do it. But yeah, don't say that to your friends. <laughs> That'd be quite rude. That would be quite gossipy, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, her house is yes. such a dump. <laughs> it's a tip. Um, so because it's a bit of a tip, I'm going to tidy up. Tidy up is picking things up and putting them away, putting them in boxes, putting them in drawers, off the floor. So if you have clothes or plates on the floor, you should pick them up and take them to the kitchen or to the washing machine. You're tidying up. You're not really cleaning mess. Mm. You're just picking things up and putting them where they should be. So the surfaces and the floors are clear. 
that's tidying up. Uh, what's the difference between tidying and tidying up? Oh, uh, to be honest, there's no real big difference. I tidy my room. I tidy up my room. Uh, I tidy the kitchen. I tidy up the kitchen. It's another example where native speakers like to add phrasal verbs just to be more casual and a bit more. I actually, I, I actually disagree. I think it actually oh, does have something to do with the word. If I mm -hmm. clean something and then I clean it up, I feel like I'm finished cleaning. Like you said, you're going to clear the, the room, right? You could mm -hmm. tidy a little bit, but if you tidy up, I feel like the room is clear. The, everything is tidied mm -hmm. away. You've, you've opened up that area. So clean or clean up, don't just clean a small section, clean everything up. Mm. Really complete that task, finish that task, clean it up, tidy it up. Not Fair just enough. tidying, not just cleaning. I, I think there are a lot of times where we say let's meet or meet up. I don't think that really has much of a difference. Mm -hmm. But I think that in this case, tidying something up, if my mom says clean your room, I would just clean a little bit. But if she says clean up your room, then I feel like it really needs to be properly cleaned. <laughs> mm, like up. Fair enough. I have heard that with up as the particle. That's like meaning completely or yeah. fully. <clears throat> yeah. I think in this up. case, I, I definitely have, I feel more like if someone's like my mom is yelling, like clean up your room. I mean, she means it. Like don't just clean a, a small section. Really actually clean your room. Clean it up. Clean it up. Okay. Well, in your case, what chore do you start with? So by Friday, the house is kind of a mess with my stuff everywhere. So I usually start by picking up things off the floor or picking things up off the floor. Now, unlike tidy up or clean up, picking up is simply that the thing was on the floor and I picked it Okay, so it's not really the exact same word. I know phrasal verbs are really annoying. But, you know, if I'm picking something up, if I'm picking something out, these are just kind of the direction that we're doing, right? So like picking things up the floor. It's on the floor. I'm picking it up off the floor. So again, some of these verbs for chores we have these back-to-back -back little words. We had the words earlier, missed out on something, catch up on something, pick something up off the floor. So we've got little tiny words because we, we tend to do these every day. So pick it up off the floor, pick it up, pick it up off the table, pick it up off the floor. Where was it? It was on the floor on the table. Now we pick it up off the floor, off the table. Okay, so I had just kind of a mess. Um, Mark, Mark's house was a bit of a tip. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think, I feel like he has a lot of cleaning to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I exaggerated so a bit. If you, if you have a lot of cleaning to do, what's next? What would you work on next? So once everything is off the floors and the tables, I start hoovering up all the dust, making sure to, I get into all the nooks and crannies behind the furniture and in the corners. So we get another British-American difference coming up. Yes. Yes. Uh, in England, you have an appliance or a machine in your house called a hoover. Mm -hmm. And the hoover sucks up all the dirt and dust off the floor. Yeah, in the UK, it is a hoover. People say the word hoover. Uh, it actually comes from a brand, I think. We have the same brand, yeah. Right. We just don't okay. use it as the, the, like the, the appliance name. We still use it as a brand name. Okay, yeah. So in England, the brand has become the name of the mm -hmm. machine. It's the noun. So I bought a new hoover or I use the hoover, plug in the hoover. In my example, I said, I start hoovering up all the dust. So that's using it as a verb. 
to hoover is to clean with a vacuum cleaner or to you so you hoover the floor um it's another case where i use the phrasal verb uh, hoover up mm. the dust hoover up the floor hoover up the dust hoover up the cat food on the floor up again means fully completely mm-hmm. get all of it don't leave any little pieces hoover up the floor so mm. completely clean the floor so i start hoovering up all the dust and i make sure i get into all the nooks and crannies this phrase is two words like black and white fish and chips nooks and crannies right. yeah. we never say these words individually it's always in this phrase Nooks and crannies are small little spaces that are difficult to get into or difficult to reach. Maybe your hoover has quite a big base or a big head, so it's hard to get into the corners or maybe there's a table leg and it's hard to get behind it. Those little spaces are called nooks and crannies. You might have to move the furniture, drag the table across the floor to get access to all of those places to really clean up the whole place. So yes, hoovering in all the nooks and crannies is my job. What's next on your list? Uh, So you were mentioning that Hoover is a brand name. And I wanted to mention that a brand name is a company name. So a company made a vacuum cleaner and the company name was called Hoover. So it really, I've (laughs) picked up in uh, the UK. And so it's actually replaced the word vacuum. And we have that with a lot of different things. Like uh, in America, elevator was actually a brand name of the lift. So in the UK, they call it a lift. And in America, we call it the elevator because it's the name of the company that started to get more and more popular. So there are actually a lot of words like that, elevator, lift, Hoover, vacuum, and things like that. Okay, I actually didn't know that. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah, no, I I didn't know that. (laughs) That's cool. So uh, back to our chores, because, uh, you know, I want to ignore those chores, but I really need to catch up on these chores. Once everything's picked up and I've cleared off the tables. Okay, so we both use this one. Once everything is off the floor, once everything's picked up. We use this word once, but we mean, what do we mean, Mark? Once everything's picked up. So after I've finished picking everything up. Is that yeah. how you would you right. would explain like, that? Once, once everything's done. Yeah, once and after have the same meaning, right? So okay. after everything's picked up. Oh, that's easier. Once everything's picked up. Oh, it's the perfect. Same sentence. Yeah, and we keep the same grammar too. So after everything's picked up, once everything's picked up, I also think like immediately after. So once that's done, we're moving on. We're going to the next thing. Once this is finished, we start on the next thing. So once everything's picked up and I've cleared off the tables, Then I get the vacuum out and start vacuuming up all the dust and little bits. So I've picked everything up. I've cleared off the tables. Now, if we are clearing things off, clearing things off, that means that lots of things were sitting on the table. Okay. And I've got my glasses and I've got all my things. And I say, could you please clear this off? Could you please clear this off? Oh, I'll just uh, put the, no, no, no. I mean, clear everything off. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let me do that. Clearing anything that is sitting on the table needs to get off the table. So let's clear this off. Let's clear that table off. Do they have a different word for Hoover in the US? Yes, we have the word vacuum. So I get the vacuum out and start vacuuming up all the dust and little bits. Now, Mark said the same thing, hoovering up, vacuuming up. So if I am vacuuming, I'm vacuuming, that's fine. But if I'm vacuuming up, I'm really making sure to get everything up and off the floor. Um, We use a lot of up and off in, in chores. Clean it up. Don't just clean it, clean it up. Don't just clear it, clear it off. 
clear it off the table, clear off the floor. We want everything off the floor. So I get the vacuum out. That means that it's maybe in a closet or it's in a space where it's hiding. So I don't have to look at it during the, the week. And I get the vacuum out and I vacuum up all the dust. Dust are the little pieces of flying dirt that sit on the floor. Sometimes it's hair. Sometimes it's threads from your clothing. It, it, it's just little tiny. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you wipe your good, you know, when you wipe your finger on something and it's dirty, that's mm -hmm. dust. It's usually these flying pieces of dirt that kind of get in and around the house. It's dusty. And it needs to be cleaned up. It needs to be cleaned up completely because we don't want dusty, dirty floors, do we? No, definitely mm. not. What about you, Mark? Any more chores that um, you've got to do? Next up is probably the kitchen. So that involves doing the washing up. Up again. Up means fully or completely. Ah, doing the washing up. Okay. The washing up. So. Again, this might be a more British phrase. This but, one is. Right. Doing the washing up. This only means cleaning the dishes in you know, the kitchen. That, that one was tough for me because I think someone asked me, uh, can you do the washing up? And I thought they meant uh, the laundry. Yeah. I thought mm -hmm. they meant the laundry. And so I was like, oh, I... I don't know if I, I feel I don't comfortable know how to work doing machine. your laundry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right. do you want me to do your laundry? That's such a weird, <laughs> I'm just a guest in your home. It's like, I just ate. Like, we just uh -huh. had dinner. Because <laughs> we wash the dishes and we wash the laundry and we do the mm. laundry and we do the dishes and you do the washing up. Is that correct? Yeah. You do okay. the washing up. Do that means only, only your dishes in the kitchen so fill up the sink with water get some washing up liquid oh yeah yeah and wash the plates the bowls the cutlery and that's the job do the washing up keep the article don't lose the article yes. the washing up if you ask someone else can you do the washing up have you done the washing up mm -hmm. or i did the washing up earlier what's next so if a British person asks you to do the washing up, they're not talking about clothes or yeah. anything. <laughs> <Oops. laughs> yeah, it's just the dishes. The and, up. and we also use the, but we say do the dishes or do the laundry. Kind of do the dishes that are dirty. Do the laundry mm. that is dirty. So, and then we ended up shortening it. But, you know, it's funny. The washing up is so interesting because it's washing up. It never changes. The washing up are the dirty dishes. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's only the dirty dishes in the house <laughs> that you're expected to Yeah, clean. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the washing up. Yeah, do the dishes, do the laundry, do the, you could say do the vacuuming. The also implies that it's a routine. It's the same mm -hmm. job, the same mm -hmm. chore every week. But yes, it could be easier to remember this as four words. Do the washing up. Yeah, that one That one is even kind of new to me, even though we speak the same language, that phrase. Yep. Uh, so what's your final chore? Okay, so we've got tile in the house. So I like to give it a quick mop in the common areas like the kitchen, bathroom, and the living room. Tile would be... Um, something that is hard on the base of your floor. It's above the cement and the tile. They're usually in square pieces and they are interlocked together. Um, and they're kind of made kind of of a breakable. They're not plastic. They're made of a breakable material that we use on our floors. These are called tiles, the pieces together. We could have carpet floors, which is basically like having um, a soft material on the floor. But instead, where I live, we have tile. We have tile. Um, so we've got tile in the house. So I like to give it a quick mop. Now, I'm not just working quickly trying to mop. I'm also going very fast, but I just want it to be a short period of time. I'm not really doing it very thoroughly. Okay. I'm not mopping up. I'm just going for a quick mop. 
So I'm not mopping up completely. I'm not finishing. I'm not going in the nooks and crannies. I'm not going into every single little space where I need to mop. Just going to, um, you know, do a quick mop. Give it a quick mop. So not only am I going fast, I'm trying not to take too long. And I'm not really being very thorough, just enough to kind of keep clean. So what about you? Did you have any other final chores that you're going to tidy up and finish up? I'll also give the surfaces a good wipe down, take the bins out, and make sure the place is less. So the first phrase here is give the surfaces a good wipe down. So I give the surface a wipe. That means clean the surface. Often when we're talking about chores or jobs around the house, give it a, then a verb. So give the room a clean or give the living room a hoover. Give the bathroom a scrub means scrub the bathroom. Give the room a clean is clean the room. Uh, give the living room a hoover, hoover the living room. So I'm going to give the surfaces a good, like a thorough, a good wipe down. I'm going to wipe the surfaces well so they are super clean. Um, it can be an instruction that you give to someone else. If you see something dirty on the other side of the room, be like, hi, oh, sorry, can you give the surface a quick wipe? Can you give the room a quick hoover? Like Kat said, a quick clean, if you don't have a lot of time, is still good. It can still help. The next little chore, the last one really, is take the bins out. In the UK, your trash can is the bin. Again, it's got an article because there's usually one main bin. The biggest one is usually in the kitchen. It's the bin. Uh, so put it in the bin. Chuck it in the bin or scrape your food in the bin. When the bag is full, the bin is full. Take the bins out. And usually there's a big container in front of your house in the garden or on the on the street. You can put it in there and then the, the bin lorry, the bin truck, will come and collect it and take it away. But the job is the bins. Take the bins out. So annoyingly, we also use the plural, the bins. Even if it's one bag, it's the bins. I don't really? know why. <laughs> yeah, I always, I just say the bins. Take the bins out. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Because I guess in some places you might have like a, a waste paper basket or a waste bin or something like that. So maybe mm. it's more than one, but even take the bins out. Maybe they mean the bin bags, multiple I know, it's bags. It's usually one big black bag one as well. Huh. Yeah, it's funny. I put it in the bin. You put it in the, the bin. bin. That's the one that's Singular in your bin. kitchen, right? That's the one in Usually. your kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or whatever room I'm in. But yeah. then the job, the chore, is take the bins. Oh, okay. Very Sorry. funny. That's English. That's English. Um, yep. So I try to make sure the place is spotless. Spotless, very, very, very clean. There isn't a spot of dirt or dust on any surface anywhere the place is spotless so i mean to be fair mark's house was an absolute dump an absolute tip beforehand so he really had to um clean get quite a deep. bit he had to really <laughs> get in deep that deep cleaning but for me um it, it's more kind of my style i clean a little bit kind of all the time so you know it doesn't have to be spotless just enough to feel clean. Just enough to feel clean. I, you know, I organized some items, I put them away, I vacuumed, I quickly mopped in a few areas, but no, is it is it spotless? No, but it's just enough to feel clean. And uh what what do you get after all of your hard work, after all of your cleaning, Mark? Well, once that's all done with. I'll usually sit down with a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit, and just enjoy the clean space while I can. 
and while you get crumbs from your biscuit all over the couch yeah. and all over the ground <laughs> immediately yeah immediately and then you leave your biscuit. cup on the side of the couch and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then just let it fill up with rubbish again mm -hmm, until it's mm -hmm. tip and then clean it all again the next <laughs> and weekend. then start it all over again absolutely yes. right so i enjoy it while i can because it's only a short time then it's back to normal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for our class today. We had a very interesting class on the chores that we do around the house. Now, of course, there are lots more chores and there's lots more things that we can be doing around the house, but we will be talking about more episodes soon. So we hope that you'll join us for our very next episode on High Level Listening. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, if you are a member, then you will receive the full PDF transcript. Every word, every example, everything that we've said in this episode will be yours to read and study. So again, that is available at the bottom of the screen. And we hope you can join us for the memberships and for the next episode very yes. soon. Thank Thanks you, guys. So much, everyone. See you next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye, -bye.